Well, Dallas Cowboys going to have a very familiar face back in the building on Sunday. But he'll be playing for the other team. Zeke Elliott back in Big D as the, his Patriots come to Dallas to take on the Cowboys. Zeke played for the boys for seven years before being cut this offseason. Zeke was always a polarizing player and one of the media's favorites because he's always good for a soundbite. Well, he was one of his teammates' favorites as well, especially his best friend, Dak Prescott. It's like a little brother. Uh, best friend, obviously, uh, came into this thing together. Um, grew, grew on the field, off the field. Uh, yeah, I mean, you just, he said it's going to be emotional. Um, yeah, I, I can't imagine uh, that he doesn't come in and run just a little bit harder maybe than he naturally does. Yeah, I think everyone's excited to see Zeke. And, uh, you know, obviously we, we want to get after him. But, uh, you know, he, he was a big part of this locker room for a long time. So it's going to be good to see him. Well, the Cowboys are going to be having to face the Patriots without their future Hall of Fame left tackle. Tyron Smith ruled out for Sunday's game. Chume Idoga will fill in for Tyron. This will be the 32nd game Smith has missed in the last four seasons. It all starts at 325. Bill Belichick and the Patriots facing McCarthy and the boys right here on Fox SA. You think Taylor's going to break up with him? Oh, absolutely. See, oh, see, I don't see this at all. He's going to dump her. Oh, how? Oh, absolutely. Why? He is the most alpha of alphas. That's a clip from the brand new episode of the Sneakers and Cleats podcast. Obviously, some riveting sports takes from David Chancellor and I on Taylor Swift as she continues to take over the NFL. But we do talk Patriots and Cowboys as well. Plus, we have NFL Hall of Famer Jerome Bettis on today's episode. You can get that wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube. Just search Sneakers and Cleats. Let's get to some high school Friday football, shall we? Not too many games on the schedule tonight. A lot of teams on buys as they gear up for the district seasons. But still, few around our area. We start with our game of the night. Churchill taking on the Roosevelt Rough Riders in a big district game. Game tied at half, but look at the hole from the O-line. Nicola Perry goes untouched. He's into the end zone. That's 45 yards lead up. 14 to 7 for Churchill right there, but the Rough Riders, they come back. Shea Marchiani gets it to Zalen Davis Shears, and they answer right back. They go on to miss the two point conversion, though, so Churchill leads by one. Here comes Nicola Perry one more time. Into the end zone for his third touchdown of the game. Churchill goes for two and makes it 22 to 13. And now we're up 29 to 13, so Churchill probably going to go on to win that one. Big game in District 29 6A between the Taft Raiders and the Warren Warriors. An offensive struggle at first here in Gustafson Stadium. Warren going for it on fourth down, but Tony Mesa gets swallowed up by Matthew Cruz. Then the Raiders, they get a big chunk play here. Johnny Lott connects with Prometheus Elmore. That drive would go on to end in fourth down as well. On the top of the second quarter, Mesa hits Lorenzo Martinez in the flat. Solid game for the first down. That drive also fizzles out, though. But Taft, they look like they're going to win this one up 21-14 in the fourth. Madison Mavericks taking on the Clark Cougars tonight. Mavericks coming off a big overtime win against Brandeis last week. Check out Cameron Dillard. Gets the handoff, breaks one tackle, then another one. He spins into the end zone. Nice move there. Gets Madison on the board. Clark answered right back, though. Senior Philip Metzger, he takes it himself. Ties that one up at seven. It's the Cougars. They're up right now 30-21 to in the fourth quarter. Let's get to some other scores around here. Bastra beating Kerrville Tyvee 35-16. Veterans Memorial and Lockhart all tied up in late in the fourth quarter at 42, and Southside beating South Sand by one late in the game. The number one team in our TNL Top 10, the Reagan Rattlers. They're taking on the Lee Volunteers tonight at Heroes. First quarter, Rattler quarterback Brad Jackson gets it out to junior Caleb Capuccio, and that's why they like that to get that young man in space. 71-yard touchdown to get Reagan on the board. Later, Rattler's driving. It's Jackson, senior Jeter battles. I wonder if he's named after Derek. I don't know. Tough catch. He's in the end zone. Reagan, they were up three scores in the first. They roll tonight 56-0. Beautiful night out at the old rock pile. Alamo Stadium, the site of the Holy Cross YMLA game tonight. First quarter, the Knights, they're getting the ground game going. Nick Hall with a stiff arm at midfield. He goes on, and nobody's going to catch that man. 58-yarder to the house. Get a little bit later, Gilbert Alvarado with a nice play fake. He hits Hall on the quick slant this time. He can catch it too. He's in the end zone. Nick Hall doing it all tonight. Holy Cross picks up their fourth win, 40 to seven the final. And at the 3A level, the Randolph Rohawks are looking to stay undefeated against Blanco. In the first quarter, the Rohawks strike first as Cody Howard 
connects with Deshaun Cobbins. Then with less than a minute before halftime, Colin Stuckey rolling out of the pocket, and he finds Cobbins, and he hauls in his second receiving touchdown of the game. The Rohawks keep on rolling. Cody Howard with, would add another touchdown on that run right there. Randolph now 6-0 and oh this season as they win 21-7. A couple of good games tomorrow as well. The number two team in our TNL rankings, Johnson Jaguars facing Brandeis. That's over at Ferris. And the undefeated Harlan Hawks taking on Stevens over at Gus. Both of those kick off right at 7 o'clock. Coming up, a former Spur gets suspended for allegations of exposing himself to women. Find out how long the suspension is. Plus, we'll check in on the AL West race when we come back. This is the Thomas J. Henry Sports Former San Antonio Spur Josh Primo was given his punishment from the NBA today. Primo will be suspended for the first four games of this season for engaging in, quote, inappropriate and offensive behavior by exposing himself to women. Primo was released by the Spurs last year just before the allegations of indecent exposure surfaced from former team psychologist Hillary, Hillary Coven. Coven, who you'll see right there on the right, alleged that Primo revealed himself to Cawthon nine times during their sessions. She also sued the Spurs for dismissing her warnings to them about Primo and then eventually pushing her out of the organization. The lawsuit was settled two weeks later. Just hours after Primo's suspension was announced, reports surfaced that he'll be signing with the Los Angeles Clippers. Primo will miss the first four games of next year. A real quick check on the AL West. Both games are tied, so no changes right now. Rangers still up 2-0. 